All right, who's ready to rock and roll into Chapter 9? We are jumping ahead here to Section 9.3. You did not miss anything. We have cut out a couple sections, some things that we are going to mix in in our bell work. Okay, which is what we got right here. Solve the quadratic equation. Uh, and we also have another one where we find the value of y, given a couple coordinates and uh, something about their distance, and then also simplifying a radical. So let's go through that. I'm going to give us a little more room by making these a wee bit smaller, and then uh, we'll get to work. All right, so who remembers how to solve a quadratic equation? If I got 3x squared minus 2x, I want to set that bad boy equal to 0 in order to solve. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to do some factoring. Many of you remember this is factor the leading coefficient or rainbow method. A lot of times people will set it up with an x over here and say, I need to multiply to negative 24 and add to negative 2, that middle term right here. Okay, so what two numbers would multiply to negative 24 and add to negative 2? That'd be negative 6 and positive 4. All righty. So I've got 3x squared minus 6x plus 4x minus 8 equals 0. So all I did is I took this negative 2x and I split it into two things here that equal negative 2x. I split it into two terms that would add up to negative 2x. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to group the first two and these last two. And actually, I always like to include my sign here because if it's negative, that is important. I do want to include it in there, all right? So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take out my GCF. So the GCF of the first one is 3x. And what's left if I take out a 3x? I'm left with x minus, if I take a 3 out, I got negative 2 right there. All right, so 3x times x minus 2. Now if I uh, find my GCF of this next one, it's going to be a positive 2 that comes out, and I'm left with 2x. Hold up, not a positive 2. What is Mr. Allen doing? Am I crazy? I am crazy. A positive 4 that comes out, and I'm left with x minus 2. Notice that these two are the same. That is one of my factors, x minus 2. The other one would be my leftovers, 3x plus 4. And that is equal to 0. Now when I want to solve this, I would set x minus 2, oops, I don't need that parenthesis, equal to 0. And I'd set 3x plus 4 equal to 0. So I'm going to get x equals 2. And I'm going to get, if I subtract 4 and divide by 3, I get x equals to negative 4 thirds. And I'm going to go ahead and leave it as an improper fraction. All right. So there are my two answers for that one. I just solved that quadratic equation. You can also use a um, you know, quadratic formula. That's always an option. Uh, if, it, if it's factorable, it usually it's just easier to factor. We have a lot of different methods uh, for different situations, okay? But that is factoring with a leading coefficient. You do need to know that getting into Algebra 2 honors next year, which is why we are reviewing it. Okay, whoa, that makes everything smaller. I was hoping it would not, but I need room. So we're going to leave it like that. Okay, so that's the first one. All right. The next one, find the value of y if 3, 5 and 5, y are equidistant from the origin. Let's draw a little picture here. We're saying that 3, 5, so roughly somewhere up here, right, um, the distance from the origin to that is the same as a point that's uh, 5, y. We don't know exactly where it is, but if we were to make some dashes here, let's see, we got 1, two, three, four, five. Um, it's somewhere, whoop, that's not a very good job. I'm going to make it a green line. Whoa. Okay. It's somewhere along this green line because it's, it's uh, x coordinate needs to be five, right? So it's going to be a point somewhere along that green line, but where? We do not know. All right. Anyone remember the distance formula? I certainly do, uh, so I'm going to, to use that, right? So it's the square root of, and we've got 3, 5, and 5, y, right? And they're equidistant to the origin. I feel like I'm going to need a little more room than this. I'm going to do this one down here. Okay. So the distance from 3, 5 to the origin is, well, 3 minus 0 squared plus... Uh, 5 
minus zero squared. I, I know my my origin coordinates is those are z, that's zero zero for my origin, right? So that's how I find out my distance to the origin from three five. So I'm going to have three squared, which is nine plus five squared, oops, which is twenty five. And that would be square root of thirty four. Okay, so let's leave it like that. Cool, for now. And I know that this is going to be equidistant to something we don't know what y is, but why don't we write it out with what we've got. So we got 5 minus 0 squared plus y minus 0 squared. So if I continue to work this out the same way, I'm going to have 25 plus y squared. Hmm. Well, how can I get rid of that square root? I'm going to write that down here. How do I get rid of the square root? Ooh, what if I square both sides? Squared, squared. What is that going to give me? That's going to end up canceling out my square roots. So I'm left with 34 equals 25 plus y squared. So I can subtract 25, subtract 25, and then uh, so that gives me 9 equals y squared. And if I square root that to solve for y, I'm going to get y equals plus or minus 3. Those would be the two coordinates that would work. Right, I could have it in two different locations. I could have 5 comma 3 and 5 comma negative 3. And think about that for a sec. 5 comma 3, which would be right whoop, somewhere around here, right? Because this guy was 3 comma 5, so it's a little bit lower. That would be, this distance here would be equal to this distance. And I could also have that point down here because this distance here would be the same distance as well. Okay, if it was on a, like a, a nice graph, it would, it would look more congruent. But uh, yeah, there's two different solutions for that particular one there. All right, now the last one is let's simplify the square root of 96. To do that, we've done this in class a few times. Um, so I got 96. You've got a couple ways of doing this. You can do a prime factorization. I don't like that way. All right? I like to think, well, 96 is divisible by what perfect squares? And what are my perfect squares? Uh, we got 4. Whoop. There's a 4. We got 9, 16. Well, that's not a 16. Uh, we got 25. 36, all those, so on and so forth, 49, 64, those are all perfect squares. Well, what's 96 divisible by? I know that 96 is not going to be divisible by 25 because it doesn't add into 5, uh, but maybe it's divisible by 16. Let's try it. Well, it's 96 divided by 16. That's 6. Okay, so I know that I can't go any bigger than that because 6 doesn't have a perfect square in it. Well, what's the square root of 16? It's 4. And then that 6, I can't take the square root of, so it's got to stay in the square root, and I get 4 root 6. Awesome. That was a wonderful, wonderful little review there. Now let's get to the actual lesson. Oh, my goodness. That took a little while to go through the bell work. So 9.3 is altitude on hypotenuse theorems. There are basically three formulas that are associated with this bad boy. All right, so it says um, angle ACB is a right angle, and CD is an altitude. So what we've got is... That's a right angle, this is an altitude, which would mean that it is a right angle as well, right? Okie doke. That's perpendicular and then an altitude. So there's actually three, basically, formulas that go along with this, okay? Um, and I'm going to go ahead and label all these parts with some different variables, okay? Um, across from A, we'll make this guy a lowercase a. Um, across from B over here, we'll make this a lowercase b. And then this side right here will be C. And then uh, this guy up here will make this little guy here D. And we'll make this E and this F. Okay. Holy cow, lots of letters. Yes, there's a lot going on on this one. Um, so we're going to write up our three formulas that go with this. Okay. So the first one. I know that D squared is equal to... E times F, and those are all lengths. That's what we're going with there. I'm using these variables to basically uh, notate what it is without having to write a ton of segments, okay? 
uh, just make it a little bit quicker that way. So I got d squared is equal to e times f. I've also got b squared, if my pen would write, b squared is equal to e times c. So the part that's close to it, the part that's close to the squared piece, times the whole thing. Okay? And then lastly, same on the other side, a squared is equal to f times c. Cool. Awesome. Yeah. Lovely. So it's important not to just remember these letters, but where they are positioned on the triangle. Okay? So if you just remember d squared equals e times f, somebody else can write them with totally different letters. So don't just remember the, the variables I'm using. Um, it's associated with the position they are on the triangle. That altitude squared is equal to, the way I think of it, the altitude squared is equal to the two sides that it's like splitting up. And then one of these sides squared is equal to the near piece times the whole piece. And this side squared is equal to the nearest piece times the whole piece. All right? Cool. So let's use it. All right. Let's solve for X, Y, and Z. Sound good? Sounds super good. All right. So if I'm going to solve for X, I know from my formula that that side right there, if it's squared... It is equal to the nearest side times the entire thing, which is 12. All righty. What is 9 times 12? Well, that is 108. X squared equals 108. And how do I solve? So I'm going to get X equals, and we're going to simplify this as a simplified radical. Um, so I can divide by my biggest perfect square. It's like 16, um, 9. Uh, 4, whatever. I'm going to try 16 real quick, and I get 6.75. Hmm, maybe something else. How about uh, 36? Ooh, if I break this down to 36 and 3, well, what's the square root of 36? It's 6, square root 3. So that would be x. Would I can include the negative as well? No, because it's a length. x values can be positive or negative, but lengths cannot, so we're just going to leave it as that. All right, next one. How about for y? Well, y squared is equal to 9 times 3. So y, is e or sorry, y squared is equal to 27. If I square root that, I get y equals. Well, 27 breaks down to 9 and 3. Square root of 9 is 3. The other 3 stays in. Okay? And last but not least, z. So I've got, uh, let's see here, for that side it would be z squared is equal to 3 times 12, so that's 36, right? So z squared equals 36. If I square root, I get z equals 6. Awesome. There's my three sides. That's the basics, or the basic just of altitude and hypotenuse theorem and how you're using it, okay? Um, and that's only true when you have a right triangle and an altitude, okay? It splits it up in this way that you can set up with these formulas. They come from proportions, from similar triangles, but it's a little hard to see the similar triangles uh, for many people, so we, we work on it with the formulas. All right, so for this one, you may notice, oh boy, this is a little bit different, right? We, we don't have, um, we're not just trying to find the part that's going to get squared. It's going to be that 10 that gets squared is equal to the part that's closest to it, x times... This, the whole entire side, AB, which is x plus 21. All right. So what do I need to do to solve this? Well, I'm going to have to distribute that, and also this will become 100, so I get x squared plus 21x. And then how do I solve this thing? Well, hey, do you realize now why we reviewed that factoring? Woo! All right. So if I subtract 100, I get 0 equals x squared I'm going to not write that along a, that line there. 0 equals x squared plus 21x minus 100. Well, what's going to multiply to 100 and add up, sorry, multiply to a negative 100 and add up to 21? Ooh, well, that would be 25 and negative 4. Yeah, yeah. All right, so I get x 
equals, if I, sub, if I set that equal to 0 and subtract 25, I get negative 25, and I get x equals, uh, if I set that equal to 0 and add 4, I get x equals 4. Which one's going to be the right answer? This guy right here, because x is my, my answer, and I can't have a negative length, so I do have to omit this guy right here, as it does not work in the context of the original problem. All right, example number three. Let's see what we got here. A similar situation, but now we're dealing with this, this radical up here. I wonder what the heck's going to happen with that. But in any event, I know that the radical three, root three, squared is equal to x times the sum of those two, right? Because it's the whole side to be x plus two. All right. Well, the square root of three squared is just three. And I would distribute this once again. So it's a very similar problem. Set it equal to 0, and I get x squared plus 2x minus 3. All righty. Let's see what we can do if we want to factor that. I need a little more room to work the rest of this problem. Uh, well, what multiplies to negative 3 and adds to 2? Well, that would be x plus 3 and x minus 1. That would multiply to negative 3 and add to 2. If I solve these, I get negative 3 and I get 1. Well, which one's going to work here? This guy right here. You could have, uh, you know, in certain problems, you could potentially have uh, two solutions. Uh, right now we're getting one solution. We're omitting the other guy over here, um, which I'm trying to cross out. There we go. Uh, because it's negative. I mean, you never know. You could get two positive answers that work. Um, not really in these problems, but in other problems you could get that. So you do always need to check. Again, similar just, or just different situations with the same type of property. Let's uh, see if we can work this guy. I'm going to scooch everything over here so i got a space to work. All right. Um, hmm. Which one's this involving? Well, I've got uh, the actual altitude is 12. So that's the one where it's 12 squared is equal to uh, 3, one of them, times the other portion, CD, which is x minus 3. So parentheses x minus 3, right? That's what this guy right here would be. Mm-hmm. Because the whole thing's x. just need the part of it. All right. So I get 144 is equal to 3x minus 9. If I add 9, I get 153 equals 3x. I wonder if that is divisible by 3. And I certainly bet that it is because 150 is divisible by 3. How do I know that? Because 15 is divisible by 3. Alrighty, so if I do 153 divided by 3, I get x equals 51. Nice. I like it. What if I asked for CD? Well, I would do 51 minus trace, and I would get 48. Mm -hmm. So there's all sorts of different problems that could possibly happen. Alrighty, so we got our homework here. Uh, one of the problems does not have enough info. Which one is it? Hmm. Indeed, quite the mystery, yes. Uh, so, uh... Good luck. Have fun. It's always fun as our geometry book is for enjoyment and challenge. Indeed.